Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest gruesome and grotesque video. Well, as I mentioned in the past, I'll continue to do videos here in this series. Anytime I come across something online, something I read, some kind of article that merits posting another video here, such as the case with this unfortunate circumstance, yet again involving the situation of another young man found stuck in an area that ultimately led to his demise. It kind of decided into a video that I talked about the other um, couple of videos back from John Jones, the man stuck behind the cave. In this case, though, it has to do with a man that was found stuck behind a supermarket freezer. Very, very unfortunate way to go out when I was reading the information. It was yet again something where I was kind of shaking my head, just wondering what a horrible way for someone to go out here. So let's go ahead and let's talk about all the information associated with the gentleman's name was Larry Eli Maria Moncado and he was basically the man found stuck nearly 10 years afterward behind a refrigerator. So here's how it goes. Uh, and I'll include the link below from people.com that I found online from yahoo.com so that way you can see even more information tied to this tragic tale. So about 10 years ago, back in 2009, November 28th to be specific, this was a young man who was living with his parents at the time. Something happened there during that day where it was he became very upset. Um, I guess there was a big fight, something along those lines, and he just ran from his home. He just left as is the way his parents described it. He left with literally nothing on him, just his clothes, apparently not even his shoes on him. Where he headed to was this. This was a place that was called No Frills Supermarket. This was a place that he worked at during that same time period. This was a supermarket that is now apparently closed. It was closed for several years. Um, and the way it was, at least then, it was still open. That's where he worked. But today, if you go there, it's being renovated. And that's where this story takes place. So the way that, that the police have found this information and they're slowly piecing it together, here's how it goes when he ran away from home it was during a severe weather type situation i think it was like pretty bad when it comes to the cold front when it comes to um, the snowstorms whatever was happening there he went to that supermarket and the way that the employees at the time there were stating even though he wasn't necessarily on shift he was still there uh, and and he was greeted and he was in the back area which was apparently a common theme there in the supermarket. I can kind of vouch for that because I myself used to work at a supermarket back during my teenage days. And it was a situation where even though some of us didn't work at the time, uh, like certain shifts, we would still come up to the supermarket and then just hang out, just hang out with some of the other people there, some of the other employees, because we were all friends at the time. So I could totally imagine him, in this case, after having that big fight with his parents after running off going here and even though he wasn't on shift being able to go in and nobody questioned it but here's what happened afterward the way the employee stated was there was an area involving a very large freezer and this freezer had a storage area on top of it and it was a situation where employees would kind of hang out there this is in their words to kind of take an, an unofficial break almost like a hideaway area that they could just hang around and then that way kind of be uh, unseen but at the same time be together and then just do whatever like in terms of hanging out and then not have management or anyone else kind of know the better i'm pretty sure that 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 looked at everyone pretty knew pretty much knew about that location about that area but it was maybe one of those unofficial look the other way kind of things as long as work was still somewhat getting done and again i can kind of vouch somewhat for that because at the supermarket I worked at there was very very large areas in the back where you could almost disappear you couldn't do uh, obviously not do it forever but if you wanted to just have a few minutes of a break um, so many areas are left unsupervised that's where people could do something along those lines so here's what happened apparently he was in that storage area right above that giant freezer and the way the story goes is somewhere along the way, he fell down 
back into the gap between the freezer and the wall. This was an 18 inch gap, very tiny, 18 inches. Uh, and I include a picture here that showcases like how much to give you a perspective of a man's whiff is when it comes to their chest size if he fell backwards and let's say he fell head first like let's say his head facing downwards can you imagine being stuck in something along that gap and not being able to get out again it reminds me of that unfortunate situation with john jones and the way he was stuck where if someone is is in an area and let's say they're backwards or let's say they're inverted it becomes very 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 hard for them to be able to get themselves out now if he was stuck in another way like let's say feet downward head upward maybe there's a chance but i'm guessing that the way he fell backwards who knows how he fell who knows how that happened? I'm guessing that maybe he was falling asleep, taking a quick cat nap, and then somewhere along the way he rolled over and then fell within that 18 inch gap. Well, if he fell downward, then that was it. And then furthermore, imagine if he would have hit his head on something involving those pipes, those large uh, metal items, the ones that you always find with behind some kind of refrigerator, then that's where you can imagine where he fell on conscience and then who knows what happened afterward. I'm just drawing straws at this, but I'm going by the most logical sense uh, with regards to what happened to his situation. And that was it. He was there uh, stuck behind this 18 inch gap in that giant supermarket freezer. Um, I'm trying to imagine when I was working at the supermarket, I remember those giant freezers as well giant walk-in freezers um, and I never saw the back areas to them but I'm trying to imagine like what kind of situation that would be and all of them point to something horrible just being stuck there the noise apparently the way the employees were stating it these refrigerators these freezers was so loud even if somebody was trying to call for help it would not be able to be heard um, it would be something where people would walk by and as it happened apparently all those years back people were doing so working their regular shifts here at this supermarket just continue to do what they do on an average daily basis and here was this guy calling for help and nobody could hear him how unfortunate is that i mean just literally feet away from being rescued and there's nothing that anybody can do nobody would know that he was back there and that nobody could hear him and he in turn couldn't do anything i imagine like trying to knock make noise bang his head against something because of the metal associated with that giant freezer and then also uh, you know the metal buffering all the noise and then also this 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 rackus this stuff involving this uh, machinery uh, just just uh, just drowning everything else out in terms of his presence so very very unfortunate so the way the story continues was now that the supermarket was closed and it's going through these kind of renovations uh, this place was being moved um, and these freezers were being moved and lo and behold, that's where they found his body. So after he was reported missing all those years, nobody found out exactly what occurred to him. Now, in terms of removing these shelves and these coolers, that's where his body was found. That's where it was identified. And now we have a conclusion to his story. But still, reading all of this isn't just, just something where, golly, imagine just that, just being able to just stuck in that situation, waking up and then realizing what's going on and then trying everything you can to do so, to, to find something to do, to make your presence known and realize there's nothing that can be done. Uh, it's just an unfortunate way. So very, very tragic circumstance. My heart goes out to this guy. This Larry Eli Maria Moncado, especially considering uh, if, if reading various articles and stating that he may have had that mental condition or something involving like um, uh, something he was taking medication on and just not being in the right mind at the time that he stormed off and then eventually leading to this. That's unfortunate. Very, very, very unfortunate. It reminds me of other stories that I've read that I might highlight here where somebody was trying to break into a fast food restaurant, but then they were found in uh, like they went down the chimney of an area of a grease fry trap and then they were stuck. And then when that happened, they died basically in that location. Uh, so who knows? But again, still involving this story, 10 years later, at least we finally have some resolution for the poor parents 
still very unfortunate, still very tragic, but at least they know exactly what happened to their son at the time. But yes, indeed, anybody happen to be from that old area there in Iowa that knew about the story 10 years ago of maybe missing circumstances involving this poor young man or anybody even worked there? If so, please post those comments below. I'd love to hear what, uh, and, and my viewers too would love to hear any kind of inside information associated with that location and what was occurring there. And and again, um, when I was reading all of this, it just reminded me of my days there in the supermarket that I was working at and realizing how all of this could easily have, have occurred, how he would have been there behind the scenes, uh, even not being on shift, just because all his buddies were there and it was just the way things are when it comes to working at a supermarket. So, all right, everyone. Thanks again, as always. Take care. Bye.